right. Hey, John. Looks like any of the members of the General Assembly want to come join us? You, you don't have to leave them all alone over here. <laughs> Center. All right. Good afternoon. A little less than a month ago, Eastern Kentucky was hit by the devastating, the most devastating, and certainly the deadliest flooding of our lifetime. We've lost at least 39 Kentuckians, each children of God, irreplaceable for their family and for their communities, and we mourn them. We also have thousands that have lost everything. Typically, after something difficult happens, there is a phrase that people say that somebody only has the clothes on their back. In this instance, thousands of people came out of that difficult early morning or late night with only the clothes on their back. I am so proud of the response of our first responders from the National Guard to Kentucky State Police to other search and rescue operations who rescued thousands. You think about the fact that over 1,300 people were rescued in those first two days, and this could have been much worse. Now, together we're working to stabilize our people. That's sheltering at our state parks, where we currently have 351 survivors, and a travel trailer program providing medium-term housing. That already has 100 travel trailers already in the east, almost all fully occupied, with about that same amount on the way. We're working to provide government services, and we are pushing FEMA harder, that's all of us up here, than they have ever been pushed before, and we're seeing FEMA take new steps that they've never taken before. They've now approved $48.1 million through the Individual and Households Program. We've also raised more than $8 million in donations to the Team Eastern Kentucky Flood Relief Fund, where 100% of the proceeds will go to those impacted. But everybody up here knows that the people of Eastern Kentucky need more help. That's why yesterday, after working for weeks with legislative leadership, I called for a special legislative session that began today with the sole focus of helping our families in Eastern Kentucky. So I'm here today with Senate President Robert Stivers, House Speaker David Osborne, and members of the House and the Senate to discuss how lawmakers are planning to help these communities. We are committed to ensuring our cities and our counties don't go bankrupt in providing the necessary services and repairs that need to be done right now and making sure that our local utilities don't have to raise rates on families that already are struggling to rebuild and wondering what tomorrow is going to bring. It also provides significant help to our school system to help get the help they need, especially so that they can get the school year started, as well as replacing necessary infrastructure. Since the beginning of this natural disaster, there has been positive, productive communication between the executive and the legislative branch. I would call it bipartisan. I believe it has been nonpartisan, simply looking for the best way to help this community and to ensure uh, that both the General Assembly and the executive branch are doing their part. To the people of Eastern Kentucky, I think today the legislative branch sent the same message that I've been trying to send. We're with you today. We'll be with you tomorrow, next week, and next year, no matter how long it takes. So today, bills were introduced in each chamber, and I want to be clear that while this is going to provide relief, it is meant for the next six months. It is meant until the next meeting of the General Assembly when we'll have so much more information. This is to ensure uh, that we don't have to wait that long to get people, uh, to get these communities back up on their feet, and I am uh, grateful uh, for what is included. Now, here are some of the details uh, that are going to help in the rebuilding effort. Much like we did for those affected in December's deadly tornadoes in the west, in the, in the west, the Eastern Kentucky flood relief legislation appropriates nearly 212.7 million dollars. It breaks down to a couple of buckets. First, $200 million from the Budget Reserve Trust Fund that currently has $2.7 billion in it goes to the Eastern Kentucky State Aid Funding for Emergencies, or the EK Safe Fund. $115 million of that will be provided to the Department of Military Affairs Division of Emergency Management to provide financial support to cities, counties, school districts, state agencies, and nonprofit or public utility service providers 
located in the areas named in the Presidential Declaration of Major Disaster. The use can include reimbursement for services, personnel, and equipment provided during the response and recovery phases, cost of replacement or repair of publicly owned buildings and contents, and advancement of funds to local governments, utilities, and school districts experiencing strained fiscal, fiscal liquidity while waiting, awaiting insurance claims and FEMA disaster assistance. That's specifically, given that FEMA can take years to get the reimbursement back in, make sure that our counties can move forward on a solid financial basis. Second, the bill provides $45 million to the Transportation Cabinet's Highways budget for state matching funds for bridge and road repairs and replacements. I think this is intended to mean that we can continue on the projects that we currently have out there while also uh, making these repairs. Third, $40 million will be provided to the Department of Education for financial assistance to school districts. Uh, here we saw schools impacted significantly more uh, than in the West. And these kids, when we can get them into school, have been through a lot. They're going to need the right type of services that I know everybody up here wants to wrap our arms around them, provide those wraparound services, and ensure they have what they need. Then, in addition to the $200 million, there's nearly $12.7 million in, in state fiscal recovery fund of ARPA, 2021 funds available inside uh, this overall package. It goes towards water and sewer infrastructure projects, the building of replacement school facilities, and for housing sites not previously utilized, but now designated to mitigate the risk of future flooding. There's a couple other pieces in there about providing flexibility, especially to the Commissioner of Education, to waive up to 15 student attendance days due to flooding. These days are determined on a school-by-school -school basis because we have some schools that are ready to go and we have others that are going to take a little bit longer. Uh, also pieces to make sure that we're looking out after our educators, our school employees, about what some of this disruption is going to, to cause and the ability to do a specific amount of remote days. Uh, we're also providing SEEK funding to both eastern and Kentucky flooded affected areas and the western Kentucky tornado affected areas to ensure those school districts aren't going to have to potentially raise uh, uh, tax rates uh, in their localities because of the impact that this has caused. It also is going to provide a little bit of extra flexibility in the Western Kentucky Fund set up by extending the amount of time we have to provide those dollars, extending it to June 30th, 2026. After many dark days in the emergency response, we're seeing a little more hope. Now, there's a lot of work to be done. Moving from an emergency to a stabilization phase in and of itself is significant, but the rebuilding here is going to be one of the most complicated we have ever seen in this country. Uh, this is not going to be, at least in my opinion, uh, the final action by the General Assembly uh, to help in that rebuilding. And remember, we're looking at years, not just the next uh, six months. So I'd like to ask first President Robert Stivers uh, to say a few words, um, family impacted, uh, certainly in a county that has been impacted. Uh, we've appreciated his leadership uh, throughout this, we have been in constant uh, communication, uh, working seamlessly, and, and appreciate all his leadership. President Stivers. Good afternoon. Um, appreciate the governor and, and what has been said here, an explanation of what uh, we are here over the next three days to deal with. Uh, we learned some lessons from what occurred in West Kentucky with tornadoes, but there is a major difference when there becomes the ability to assess. It is, and I don't want to diminish anything, but it's pretty easy to see a building that is totally obliterated versus a school that had six feet of water to know what the extent of the damage is. So what we're here in this bill to deal with today, and the governor is correct because you see many of our House and Senate colleagues, Republicans and Democrats, I don't know if there's been a day that has gone by since that Thursday, Wednesday night, Thursday, that some of us or all of us have not been in some type of communication with each other about, well, there's a need in Letcher County that they have there, but we have plenty of supply in Clay County or vice versa, and that type of communication has gone on. Understanding the depth and the breadth of the problem, um, it's 
you know, different depending on where you were and what happened, the schools, the water, uh, the bridges. Uh, it's, it's really, you know, there, there's things that can be amazing, amazingly good or amazingly bad. And to see a house sitting on top of a bridge that you can't cross the bridge because they have to move the house first. And somebody said, well, how do you know it's a house? Well, I could see the plumbing pipes coming out the bottom. Literally, that's the type of devastation you've seen here. So what this is intended to do after consistent and long conversations, multiple conversations, being there on the ground, taking other colleagues there, working, uh, delivering water, supplies, and food, because certain areas were totally cut off by the fact of the high water or the road was totally gone or the bridge was totally gone. We are looking at short-term objectives. And for a sequencing standpoint, we were in a different position in the last session because this occurred, the tornadoes in Western Kentucky occurred right before the session. Therefore, we could assess and get updates almost on a daily basis as to what was needed as the session went on. Different position, we're four months out. So what this bill will do, be it House Bill 1 or Senate Bill 1, is take care of short-term objectives until the ability of us to get back in here working with the various agencies out of the governor's office, out of the federal government, to get a full assessment of all the damage. And I'll say this to the governor and everybody else, I don't know if we'll have it by January 1. That just becomes the reality because there is so much there. But with that, I, I want to say just a couple of things about the people who you see up here. Uh, nobody asked about politics. Nobody asked about anything about doing this to, to do photo ops. People are out there muddy, dirty, muck boots, gum boots, whatever type of boots, gloves, taking vaccinations to make sure that there was no type of tetanus or other communicable disease or disease that could be spread that was taking, people were sacrificing. The state employees, and I can tell you this from my home county, two and a half miles away from Oneida, some people will know the Oneida Baptist Institute, it took them eight hours to go two and a half miles digging the slips out off the road. And when you get some of the dirt moved, then it would slide right back over. And they would have to continue to do that with like inloaders, 988s and things of that nature. Those individuals who have worked in the state transportation cabinet, as I saw one young man that I've known for years since a little boy, he said, we haven't stopped working since this happened. And that's now three weeks. Am I off on that? Right there. Right at three weeks, I think, tomorrow. Four weeks tomorrow. Four weeks tomorrow. So it's, it's an amazing type of tribute to the individuals who you see here. Many individuals who you don't see here that are out every day trying to get that road built, to put that tile back in, to get food to somebody's house, to get medicine to the elderly, the sick, or the infirmed. And that's what you have seen with this group that has coalesced around something that people have said is not a hundred year flood, but has been estimated to be the equivalent of something that has not been on record or recorded or in any way historical for 600 years in some people's estimation. That is the part that I don't think people understand. You didn't just have to be by the river to get damaged. You saw whole hillsides uh, come down and wipe houses out. But to everyone involved and to the public out there, we are here today as the General Assembly to work with the executive branch and the federal government. And as the governor said, we all have been pushing the federal government and some of their reaction time. Uh, more the hierarchy than the individuals on the ground because they can only follow the orders from up above. Uh, this is a testament to what everybody does when this happens, something like this happens in the state of Kentucky. You come together to make sure your friends, your neighbors, and your families are taken care of. Thanks. Okay, speaker. Well, thank you, Robert and Governor. Thank you. Uh, in, in very uh, brief terms, there's no piece, uh, reason for me to be repetitive of uh, the legislation and the legislature's position uh, that President Stivers um, 
just uh, went over, but I do want to be repetitive of a couple things. One is the uh, the cooperative spirit uh, between the administration and this. The administration has been outstanding uh, to deal with, both in their recovery efforts and uh, and and uh, also in the construction of this this piece of legislation. I also want to be particularly repetitive of acknowledging these legislators here on both sides. Um, and I, I think to the governor's point, uh, this, this has been a nonpartisan effort. And there, there are eight members of the, the House East Kentucky Caucus. I see two Senate members uh, here as well, uh, that uh, both Republican and Democrat, that have not only been tireless uh, advocates during the construction of this legislation, which culminates, uh, or the beginning of it culminates here today, um, but, but also have been tireless in their efforts on the ground. Um, uh, every time I've talked to any single one of them, they have uh, uh, they've been on the ground uh, helping their folks at home, and uh, I don't think enough can possibly be said about uh, the the work that they have been done. So, thank you. Thank you. So I think there's a committee meeting here coming up in just a minute. So why don't we take just a, a few questions, and then the legislature needs to get back to its work. Anybody? So with the Western Kentucky piece of legislation, um, we had a little bit of time from when we, we first started talking about it to when it got passed. We actually had the first dollars out of that fund within days, not within weeks. Um, the funds are structured very similarly, which means the applications will also be uh, uh, similar. Uh, so what will happen is these, these communities will have to apply so that we have the information we need. But we were able to turn those around typically in days. Uh, our goal, since we're here, is to be getting those documents together and out to them. Um, we want it to be uh, days or week, not weeks, in, in getting the dollars out. And the bills are coming due. Uh, certainly, Knott County School System has um, over a million dollars already obligated for the cleaning uh, that was done in the schools that, that they're going to be able to go back into. And a portion of that bill is coming due, and they're going to need help with that. So. Uh, we are going to move really fast. We moved really, really fast with Western Kentucky, and I think we can we can hit that same goal. So we're looking right now at this stabilization phase, which is what most of these dollars go into. So our primary. Uh, intermediate housing is our travel trailer program. Now we've already made purchases to amplify that before uh, this piece and what that means is we've got another hundred plus coming, um, some of which we purchased directly, some of which we think we're going to get surplus from uh, Louisiana. Uh, a lot of people, we're really looking at more than six months where people are going to be in travel trailers when you look at uh, what rebuilding is going to take. And then there are some uh, very complex discussions going on about what housing looks like in the future. Uh, these are places that people care and love about. Uh, love. Some of them are dangerous for them to go back to. The private bridge issue is a serious and significant one where sometimes replacing the private bridge costs more than the uh, total amount that anybody could qualify for. Uh, under FEMA. And so I think we need to be um, transparent with people that we are having these conversations, we are working this problem, but it is a uh, major challenge. Uh, but we're getting some real innovative ideas coming both from the federal government, coming from uh, local officials, coming from our, our legislators. So that extra amount would have put more in the, the trust fund that the Kentucky Housing Corporation uh, uses. We're still looking at long-term use of that. The question is, would we have even deployed it in that period of time? Um, and, and or should it come through a, a regular session where we can have those plans um, already put together? I, I think that any uh, overall housing plan as it comes together will need senior housing, and Kentucky Housing Corporation does that very, very well. We think that working together, the funds will, will be there when they need to be. So it was, it was upon agreement of everybody. All right, one last one. I heard, yeah. What, what is the total amount of the state uh, Yeah, the, the total amount that is, that is going into the fund is... 
Right, it's 200 million in general fund, 12 million in, in ARPA. Now our hope is that we will be able to be uh, potentially reimbursed for some, uh, if not a lot of those dollars going out. Certainly the extra uh, funding for transportation is something that's going to fall uh, under FEMA reimbursement. And we'll be moving, uh, we asked for 100%, we got it for the 30-day uh, period for category A and B, and actually in this instance, that's gonna cover most all of the search and rescue. It's gonna cover a real significant portion of the debris removal. We learned a lot about that uh, from the West. We'll be asking for 90-10, since we didn't get the full 100 for the rest of it, um, and that'll provide uh, real significant relief for, for what the state's doing here. All right, thank you all very much.